Yeah, hello. Do you ever record yourself playing drums? Well, I do, and mixing is the hardest part of this whole shebang. But it doesn't have to be. I'm gonna show you how you can do better. And listen, I promise it's not as hard as you might think. Uh, at least it's gonna be easier than filming this freaking intro. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> Now, getting drums to sound like that has taken 25 years of musicianship from going to the recording studio as a kid. Uh, that, that sounds stupid. I'm not doing it. I'm going to do it my way. And then recording drums myself and doing the remote session thing. And now today I'm helping manufacturers, distributors, and shops all show off their cool drums and all the other stuff they got. All my experience in this recording thing, coming from every different angle, that makes me feel like I have a decent sense of how to make drum recording sound good on a phone speaker, on a computer, or in headphones. I've even been fortunate enough to help professionals do the same thing, like Brandon Blakely from Hot Mulligan. That guy is a touring machine, and he's done so well tracking in other people's studios, but it's time for him to start doing his own thing, and he asked for my help. So first, I took the time to put together a huge list of all the stuff he should buy to do what I do. From mics to cables, interfaces, storage, a computer, and everything else, that was all on this one list. Brandon got everything we needed, and then I took a weekend to set up his home studio out in Iowa. And just like that, Brandon was able to make drums sound like this. And this doesn't stop with drummers. Here's another guy I helped. Greg teaches guitar, he's run concert venues in the past, and he's got a wonderful home studio. But the issue he was finding is he just wasn't happy with his room sound. So he hired me to come in and figure out how to make his drums sound huge. So with a little creative thinking, I found this spot right up in his stairwell. I was clapping all around the space trying to figure out like what's gonna sound good for drums. <laughs> it was this one specific spot right up the stairs and listen the results speak for themselves i've been so fortunate to help folks all over the midwest and today i'm going beyond we're going to be looking at a session from a friend of mine named zeke out in oregon and we're going to see if we can transform his original drum mix into something completely different just with some different plugins and with my set of ears and i'm going to show you how you can do the same thing so strap in we're going to get rocking and rolling now <laughs> All right, all right, so maybe you're strapped in, but we need to take a second here. Remember, there's no rules in recording. Think about uh, some of the guys who recorded the Beatles and some of those folks. One time, Glenn Johns was asked, this is a guy who literally has a mic technique named after him for miking drums. And during some sort of master class, he was asked, well, how far do I put one mic out this way and that way? Where should I measure these things? And Glenn uh, just immediately said, oh, we don't know. We just set the freaking mics up here and there. And if it sounded good, that was good enough. Now, if that's good enough for one of the greatest engineers of all time, I can guarantee you that whatever you're doing is going to be just fine for you. And you're going to be able to get good tones. You don't have to get so scientific about this. If you get the basics right, use some of these tools creatively to form your own drum sound just like I did. First things first, we're going to get this session loaded up in the computer here and we're going to listen to what Zeke has going on right now. Immediately what I'm seeing on the screen here just visually is really overwhelming. So I'm gonna show you a way to make this way more manageable right now. So in Logic, we can drag the mixer pane down here to minimize it. And then we can use Command-2 to view that mixer separately. And to quickly toggle between the mixer and the actual audio grid, all you have to do is hit Command-1. 
Now I know learning hotkeys like this, you know, these sort of shortcuts, it can be a pain in the butt, but as you integrate one or two every week, every month into the way that you work, eventually you're gonna have so many in your arsenal that you can quickly, much more quickly, get through all your audio and video editing over time. And time's the one thing we can't buy, so anything we could do to make things easier on that end, I'm, I'm all for it. Now, just like that drumming clip, as we learn these hotkeys, that's all muscle memory. So eventually you're not gonna have to think about this. And, and mixing generally is the same way. Think about this. When I'm drumming out on a gig, I'm not thinking about actually drumming. In the moment, I'm not thinking about that. I'm thinking about the bag of chips I'm gonna eat afterwards. Now let's get back to Zeke. That guy is an educator and drummer up in Oregon. And he's really, really been smart about his use of social media. He's using video content to help garner better relationships with his students, better relationships with his clients when he's working as a drummer, and, and all that sort of thing. So appropriately, Zeke did send along some video that goes along with this audio session. And what's so cool about recording in Logic is you can actually import that video and then at the end, export your nice final clip with the good audio out and then you can throw that up on socials youtube instagram whatever you're doing you don't need additional software to do that if you're just using one camera angle first things first we're going to import this video baby all we do here is drag the video into logic you don't change anything and then you just hit okay click the blue button here so the frame rate from the video isn't changed too and then you're good to go so now that the video's in logic we have to line the video up with the good audio Zeke hits his sticks together a few times at the beginning of the video. I tend to opt for hitting the snare four times at the beginning of the video once I've started the recording software and the video software going. Either way, it makes it super easy to get that video lined up at the beginning. Otherwise, you're just gonna be guessing and it's gonna take way more time and become way more of a headache. So I'm gonna drag that video down to the bottom of the grid right now so I can better line up its audio with the purpley audio of the right and left overhead. Once that's done, I'm gonna use the slider in the upper right to zoom in and make the amount of time that I'm seeing smaller. And then I can move things at sort of a shorter pace. I shortened up that recorded audio so that the three clicks are at the beginning. And then I'm gonna really closely match the position of that recorded audio to the stick clicks in the video from Zeke. From there, I usually scooch that good audio back about 20 samples, and that seems to be about the sweet spot for making that visual of the drum video look good with the sound that's underneath it from the recording. Now that we're lined up, let's take a peek at the footage we're gonna be working with. Zeke has a really unique approach to the way that he does music. He does the drumming, and then his drums can also trigger synthesizers that he has around him. So that's sort of the kind of interesting musical elements or drone-like elements that you're hearing here. And this mix is not a bad starting place. This is decent, but I want the drums to shine on their own. And then I want everything to shine as one big musical picture in the end. All right, we're getting into the nitty gritty now. Let's fix the kicker! Kick drum is one of these elements that a lot of folks think is there for the low end. It's supposed to support the low end, but it's not just that. You need to have some high end punch with your kick drum, otherwise it's not gonna really cut through anything else in the mix. If you have music, guitars, keyboards, bass, whatever, how the heck is a kick drum gonna sound in a mix if it doesn't have some high end to give it a little punch, some oomph? So let's see what Zeke has going on with his kick sound right here. Now, when we listen to the kick in this context, it does sound appropriate. You get some punch, you get some low end, but we can do more to help pull out some of the best parts that Zeke is already trying to highlight. When we listen to the outside kick mic by itself, the first thing I notice is that there's a lot of bleed. That means I'm not just hearing the drum, but I'm hearing some other stuff that's in there too. There's a little ANF snare drum, there's this little timbali that Zeke has in front of him. So let's see if we get a more isolated tone from the inside kick mic that Zeke has going on. Immediately, I'm hearing exactly what I want to hear. I'm getting some punch, I'm getting some low end, and now we just have to shape it in such a way that aesthetically it's it's pleasing to my ear. The only thing I'm not liking here is that there's so much bass being boosted by both of the inside and outside kick mics and they're both boosting the same frequencies. So I'm gonna show you now how I'd approach EQing these kicks before we get into giving them 
the beef treatment. The beef treatment, ah! <laughs> Before we get into the beef treatment, I gotta treat my beef. So we're gonna make a PB and J. Start with a fine loaf of Italian bread. Mm -hmm. Add your bun mama, strawberry preserves. The last of the Skippy smooth peanut butter that you got in the house. Cut that puppy in half and bon appetit. So first, we're just gonna start with a fresh slate. I'm gonna take off the plugins that Zeke was using, and then we're gonna add some graphic EQs in. And those we're simply gonna use as sort of a high pass filter. All you have to do is turn the filter on by clicking this thing in the upper left here. Then we're gonna click this DB thing over here, and by clicking it, you just push your mouse up. Eventually, it'll start to read 48 DB per octave. That's where we want it. Then above that, you're gonna see that it reads 20 hertz, which is sort of the frequency under which it's gonna just cut everything off. We're gonna click that and we're gonna drag the cursor of the mouse up and that's just gonna determine where that frequency is. So the higher it goes, the less low end you're gonna have and we're gonna roughly set that to 62 hertz right here. And now here's an easy part if you have two mics on the same sound source like the kick drum. All you have to do to copy that plugin from one channel to the next is hold Option and Command together on the keyboard and then simultaneously click that plugin with your mouse and drag it to the other channel that you want it on. And those settings are gonna come along with it too from the first channel, so a lot less work there. Over time, as you start to add tens of plugins to your, your setup and logic, this is gonna make work a, a, a breeze. After that, we're gonna add some more shaping EQ. We're gonna use Logic's stock vintage graphic EQ plugin right here, which is sort of like an API plugin, but it's free with the software, which is a big reason why I recommend Logic. For a couple hundred bucks, I mean, listen, you get all these amazing plugins built in. You have video integration, you have a simple workflow. I just, I, I don't have any bad things to say about this software. And the other part about the plugins is they have all these different presets, which are a great starting point if you're trying to get a nice, quick, decent mix. For the inner kick microphone, we'll use a kick preset. Uh, here's one called Old School Kick. Just for fun, let's see what this does to the outside kick mic. And then the inner kick with the EQ sounds like this. There's some noticeable shaping, but when you get to the next step, then you're really gonna start to hear the difference. Now let's hear that outer kick mic with the EQ. I know that we're getting some bleed through that microphone, but it could be interesting if you use it for something other than a sort of kick microphone, purpose-wise. You could use this and put a bunch of distortion on it or a bunch of compression, and then use it in place of a room mic to add some character to your overall drum recording. I do that all the time. I, I, I do this thing called a throwaway mic. So I'll have all my standard microphones that I have on the drum set, and then I'll maybe throw one extra mic pointed at the room or on the floor sometimes wherever, and so that microphone, I don't know what's gonna come of it, but once in a while, I get a real interesting tone that I can use to add character to my overall drum recording. All right, back to the inner kick mic. We're gonna add some compression now, which is sort of the secret sauce. We're gonna go to effects, then dynamics, and then into compressor. And again, just for the sake of making things easier here, let's see what kind of presets they have that we can use. Let's just start at the rock kick preset. All right, we're gonna listen to the mic with it off and then let's turn it on. So what I'm hearing here has too much low end, so I'm gonna turn that high pass filter on now that we made earlier. What's so difficult with drums is you really have to monitor the low end because it gets out of control really quickly. Sometimes on my mixes, I will have uh, high pass filters on individual channels, on the drum bus, sometimes even on the mix bus. And some of that is because I'm mixing for social media more often than not. And if there's too much low end and you're trying to watch a video through your phone or even through a computer speaker, <laughs> that low end starts to sound real like farty <laughs> for a lack of a better term. So basically eliminating sort of problematic low end is gonna make your job a lot easier in the end. It's gonna make your final product a lot better in the end too. Now that we've got the kick to maximum beefy potential, <laughs> let's take a look at the snare drum. It's time for another snack break. You ever had an icy slush? Let's give it a taste test. The heck? I gotta cut this puppy open. Oh yeah, baby. That's good right there. That's good for $1.25. Can't beat that. 
Let's take a look at Zeke's original session and sounds. Right now, Zeke has EQs on each channel. The chroma effect that you see here on the left is a reverb and there's a compressor on the right, but they're not on, so I'm just gonna take them off for now. Let's hear what the two snare mics, top and bottom, just sound like together with everything else off. We're hearing a little bit of bleed from other drums around the kit, which is pretty normal. But what happens if we just hear the snare top mic? It's like McDonald's. I'm loving it. What's nice is that we're getting plenty of that bottom snare sound, that snappy high end that we're looking for. And that means that we might not even need to use the bottom snare mic in the mix. But let's hear what we're getting out of that bottom mic anyways. It's really just the high frequency, so I think we can get away without using that mic. So let's see what we can do if we just pretty up the top mic with some EQ and some compression. I'm literally just gonna use that same free logic stock EQ and compressor on the snare mic that we used on the kick mics, but we're gonna use different presets. For the EQ, let's take a look at what we can use here. Zeke had a snare presence preset on the standard graphic EQ on here before, so that might've been for a reason. Let's see what that does. And then for the compressor, Let's make it easy. We'll give us a starting point here with the rock snare top preset. Let's uh, let's hear what these couple settings sound like on the drum here. Uh, that sounds a little boxy to me, so let's change one of the settings. We're gonna change to the rock snare preset for the EQ, and we're gonna see if that gives us a little bit more low end. Now Zeke does something really smart with his drums and he uses a bandana that covers the top of his snare head. It creates this super dead like 70s type of sound that you can really use for a lot of different musical applications. It makes recording super simple. It makes live sound super simple. You're the dude running the PA is gonna love you. And uh, you know, really that's all we have to do to get a good sound is just those few little moves that we made right now. So let's move on to the overheads. Overheads baby! <laughs> All right, so I removed some of the plugins that Zeke had on here, like an extra compressor and an EQ, and that's because he didn't have them turned on. All right, so let's hear these overheads here with the EQ on. There's a little bit of a level raise on the right overhead, uh, which is the one nearest the hi-hat, and then also uh, he adds a little presence to both sides of those overheads too. And then let's hear the raw signals, which uh, really, I don't think there's gonna be a big difference. So Zeke works in a really small room, which means it's gonna be pretty difficult to get any sort of huge room sound out of it, like I do out of my recordings. But we still have to add some sort of vibe to this dude's recordings. And so the way that we're gonna do that is with compression. And we can do that on the overheads right here. Uh, and it's not just that, we have to take this other thing into account too, is that Z doesn't have Tom mics on here. So we have to make sure that the overheads are getting some of the low end and some of the punch from the toms as much as they're sort of getting the shimmer from the cymbals. So for the sake of simplicity, both of these overhead channels are gonna get the same EQ and compressor plugins that we've been using this whole time. So for the EQ, what's really nice is that Logic already has a drum bus setting here, which is also known as a drum group. And this is an EQ setting that you can apply to an entire drum set. It's supposed to give you the low end for the kick, the punch of the kick, the punch of the snare, the shimmer, the overheads, all of it is supposed to come through in this one EQ setting. And then on the compressor, I'm gonna see if they have something similar for a good drum set sound. And let's just try this uh, Type R tight drum kit setting. All right, we're gonna even out our level for each channel. I'm gonna put them at zero and we're gonna see if this sounds like a drum set. I mean, to me, I could literally just use these two mics and we'd have a great drum set sound that's usable in a whole music mix. The only thing I'm seeing here is that our levels are a little hot, so we're gonna bring that down a little bit so that they don't peak over zero, and then later we can adjust them to where we need them to be in the context of the rest of the microphones. So now that our overheads sound great, we're gonna skip down and check out the room mic. So what Zeke is doing with the EQ here is interesting for his rim mic. He's cutting out some of these mid-tones and I like to do the opposite. I tend to bring in the mid-tones from my rim mic. So let's see here what Zeke is getting from his settings. 
That's pretty good there. That sounds pretty great to me. But you folks know the drill. Just like everything else, we're gonna put an EQ and a compressor on here and see what that does. I couldn't find something that I liked on the graphic EQ, so I pulled up this tube EQ here and found a drum kit setting there. And, and then I just used a room setting on the compressor. So let's hear that. Now the sound is pretty good, but I wanna get more character out of the room. So let's change the threshold on the compressor because that's the knob that determines how much that compressor is going to work to smooth the highs, the mids and the lows all together here. It's gonna smush them all together. All right, so the compressor is doing a little more work and this sounds pretty good. And, and really at this point, we've gotten through the tough work of getting those individual channels where we want them to be sound wise. So let's get into the fun part of moving the faders and, and getting this to our final drum tone pretty quickly from here. Play ball. <laughs> I don't know what that clip was. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna get into it here. Let's start putzing with the levels, the faders. All right, so we have five channels we're gonna use here. Everything else is muted because we're not gonna putz with them right now. We have the inner kick mic, the snare top mic. We have two overheads, and then we have our room sound. With that in mind, we're gonna put all this stuff at zero, and then I'm gonna start bringing them in to create the picture sound wise that we want of the drum kit. All right, so we're bringing the overheads up. And that's a decent little sound, but let's support this with a little punch from the kick. All right, I like the way this sounds. So let's bring in a little snare close mic now. And, and really what we're doing here is we're adding low end to the sound of that snare drum more than anything else. It's some beef. And you know I'm a beef loving boy. All right, now we're gonna add in the room. And the thing with the room here is that Zeke's room is small. Again, it's not a huge space, but we, we can have this sort of sound serve a different purpose than just creating a, a giant, you know, John Bonham type of drum tone. So that crash symbol in the middle of the clip is pretty harsh because it, he hits that thing hard. So if we turn the overheads down a bit and we bring in more of that room mic, this is gonna help to alleviate some of those harsh high frequencies that we were hearing before. I think that helped a lot. I mean, all I had to do was use my ears to move the faders around. There, there, this isn't a hard process here. It's, it's you learn this, you trust your ear. The more you listen to music and the more you work on music, the easier this is gonna become. So now we have all our individual mics together in a group painting this picture, but there's one last piece of processing we have to do, which is processing all these mics to turn them into one solid stereo sound. So what the heck is drum bus processing or drum group processing? To me, the way that I explain it is we're gonna take all these different channels and turn them into one unified drum set sound. Think of it like this. So the mics, right? We have a kick drum mic, we have a snare drum mic, overheads for some other instruments, and then a room mic. And oftentimes, a lot of people are gonna have even more mics going on. I generally have like 14. So think of each of these for a, a, a different instrument. I need to take those different instruments and turn them into one drum set sound. So, easy to do, just like the other channels, EQ and compression. Are you sensing this theme here? Like, it's not that hard. It's just learning that these are the couple things that you really need to understand that can help shape your drum kit from being mediocre sounding or decent sounding and taking it from mediocre or decent to good, great, and beyond. All right, so let's hop back into the session here. And so we're gonna select all the five channels, which I've done here in the mixer. And then if you go to the output section, we're gonna see that these channels are set to stereo out. I wanna go and click on the output of any one of the five selected channels, go to the bus section, and then I'm gonna put these on a new bus. And let's rename it uh, drums. 
All right, now you're gonna see that all five channels here are coming through the drums bus and they're, they're coming through as a single stereo signal. So let's add that EQ and compression now. So I stole that channel EQ from the kick drum, which is gonna act as our high pass filter. I stole the graphic EQ from the room channel. And then after that, to complete this whole little circuit, I added the compressor and I set that to the drums mix preset. Now again, the reason I'm using presets here is not just because it's easy, but it's also because then Zeke or me in either case can really tweak these things from there much more easily than they would from scratch and really help to again personalize that sound for exactly what you want it to be so the drums mix setting on the compressor isn't going to do a lot here because the ratio is low so i'm going to bring that up to three to one and then we're going to really start to hear the sound of that compressor and the compressor really is the glue for all of this that's the final element that is taking those five drum mics and turning it into one drum set sound so you know if we give it a little more power here it's really going to help to create create that glue that we want between all these different instruments. That sounds good to me. So now let's turn those effects off and we're gonna listen to the sound again coming from the kit and then we'll turn them on again. To me, this is a super 70s style sound and it's got a vibe. But there's one thing that I would recommend beyond everything that we're doing here to kind of deal with something like that real hot and heavy crash symbol that comes in in the clip. It's called self-EQing. So the way that I've heard self-EQing described in recording is basically you want to be able to go in and no matter the engineer, the mics, the drum kit, or anything, you're going to be able to more easily create a wonderful sound. And the way you do it is this. You want to hit your toms the loudest because those are going to be accent instruments. You're going to want to hit your kick and your snare drum somewhere in the middle volume-wise. But the cymbals, you really want to hit the quietest while trying to achieve the tone that you want out of them. And that's why I tend to like thinner symbols over heavier symbols because I can get them to open up at a much lower volume. Now this is something I'm still working on today. I still like to hit drums and cymbals heavily because it's uh, sort of an outlet for me, you know, emotionally. That's, an, that's another story. When I'm in a recording setting, I'm working, I'm getting paid, you bet your butt that I am definitely going to try to self EQ the best that I can to produce the best product for the artist or the client. All right, so now you have a better understanding of what bus processing looks like. So now we have to bring music into the mix. Well, I've got a car and it seems to me it won't fit a drum set, it won't fit three, it's a tiny car, and it smushes my butt, my butt, my butt, my butt. So mixing music in with the drums is a super simple process, and it's something I've been doing since the days when I was doing so many different drum covers. Basically, I'm gonna use subtractive EQ. I'll put an EQ on the drum bus like we already did, and then I'm gonna take that EQ and reverse all the settings for it on the music bus. And it's, it's perfect because what that does is it creates a sonic space for your drums to shine in, especially if you're doing covers. And if you're you know working on sort of original music or whatever, it's an easy way to quickly get that music into a, a sonic space that feels good with the drum set. Now, normally I would use a Waves API EQ on my drums and music bus, and the drums EQ would reflect the frequencies that I wanna bring out in the drum bus, just like we've looked at, the oomph of the kick, the punch of the snare and the toms, and then the shimmer of the cymbals. And I'd literally just do the mere opposite on the music bus or whatever music channel that we're working with. Uh, that means I can turn the music up a little bit and the drums are still gonna fit sonically really well in there, but that spot that I've card for those drums is just going to mean that, again, they continue to shine through. You're a drummer. You want your drums to be the star of the show here. We can use a similar tactic on Zeke's session, but since we used the tube EQ on the drum bus, we're going to have to modify what this technique looks like in Logic. Let's hear the music and the drums together in the end here. Drums sound good, music sounds good in the mix. Now we just gotta make this puppy sound loud and proud for social media. <laughs> on the stereo output here, Zeke has a compressor to make everything louder, and it's on a drum room setting. I understand that that's a, a, you know, a decent choice to make here, but 
I'm gonna show you another approach. Since we have the music in the mix, let's pop the normal graphic EQ here, and we'll try something made for mixing or mastering. We'll try to pop this uh, pop music preset on here, uh, which moves a few things around here sound-wise, and then the final processing we need to use uh, is gonna be a little different here. We're gonna use a limiter. So that's just basically gonna help make your signal a lot louder without going over that zero level, without creating any peaking. Well, we'll go a little extreme here so you can hear exactly how big of a difference this can make. Now we're gonna bring that sort of level back down to 3.5 dB of gain, which is a reasonable amount to add here. And let's hear what that sounds like. I dig that. I think it's a good place to, to call it. You know, I think this is perfect. So let's check out the final product now with these stock Logic plugins. And then I'm gonna show you how different going from the stock free plugins can be to spending a few hundred bucks on some really nice plugins and, and, and what the difference is between Zeke's original mix, the plugin mix, and then this nice paid plugin mix. Now, looking at this session here, I'm hoping that you got a good perspective on how to use Logic, its free plugins, and a little bit of your ear to really get a decent tone out of your drums. But we can take that to another level if we use some plugins that you might have to pay a few bucks for. But, oh, I mean, this is sort of the secret to me getting an even better sound out of my drums. We can go from this raw signal, then we add the Logic plugins in, and if we upgrade to paid plugins, then you're gonna get this. Now this doesn't take an arm and a leg money-wise to do this, so I'm gonna walk you through quickly exactly what we have going on here, and you can Google some stuff and see if you're into this sound too. I put the same EQ and compressor on each individual channel with different settings customized for each mic and mic type. So the products I'm using here are gonna be the Waves 560 EQ and then the Waves CLA Drums channel strip. Now, while I don't use the CLA Drums plugin a lot anymore personally, I always recommend it for beginners getting into drum recording because it's so easy to get a great tone from this particular plugin. And even though I don't use that particular plugin a lot, I use that API 610 EQ all the time. It's got so many great presets that are a wonderful starting point for getting your drum sound. Then on the drum bus, I'm gonna use that same EQ, but for the compressor, I use a different one, which is the Waves API 2500 bus EQ. And that's gonna squash all of these sounds together from the drum set to give them a, a really wonderful character. Then on the mix bus, I'm gonna use the Waves Sheps Parallel Particles plugin, which looks like it's some sort of like alien video game. And then instead of the Logic Stock Limiter, we'll use the Waves L316S, which is, it looks complicated, but it's super easy to use, and it really sounds awesome. recording. You learn some basics like what we're going over here and then you just start moving your faders, start moving the plugins around and turning those knobs and eventually you're going to get something you like. And because there's no one right way to do this, just remember, as long as you can trust your ear and learn to train your ear further, you're only gonna be further dialing in a more wonderful, a more usable, a more professional sounding drum signal over time. Now, if you're still watching this, I'm sure you're the type of person who knows what kind of drums you wanna play. You're probably the type of person who knows how to hit the drums in a certain way to get the sound that you want out of them. Now, just apply that same level of curiosity and creativity that you've taken to drum performance 
performance and put that energy towards your drum recording. Now, if you need a little help, shoot me a comment. I'm super happy to answer any questions you have. And I also teach this stuff. So shoot me an email or whatever, or get at me and, and we'll start talking about how I might be able to help you achieve exactly what you want to achieve with your drum recordings. All right, go get drumming now. And I'll see you later. Until next time, be good.